All right, so we're working on site today at a site that has a solar edge inverter solar system as well as a Tesla Powerwall battery backup system. So I just thought I'd take the time to go over all of the system components with you, how they work, uh, how everything functions, and uh, all of the different components. So basically, there are solar modules up on the roof, bringing DC power coming down through this conduit here. Each module has one optimizer per module. Uh, the optimizers are Solar Edge branded optimizers. Basically what those do is it's a transformer because in our area we have what's called rapid shutdown requirements. So if you shut off this DC disconnect or if you shut off anything having to do with the solar, the inverter will actually send a signal up to the optimizers and open them like a switch. So it actually prevents the power from coming down from the roof. Uh, and it will limit it to one volt per optimizer because our rapid shutdown requirements require us uh, to limit it to, I believe it's 50 volts within 10 seconds or 30 volts within 10 seconds. I don't know exactly. I'll have to double check code reference right here. Um, so the DC power coming down comes into the inverter, goes into this DC disconnect. This is just going to be an off on switch. And all this does is it's going to shut off the power coming down from the panels not the power going into the inverter from the grid. So going through the DC disconnect, as you can see, the DC disconnect is on right now because the system is producing power. Solid green light, solid blue light. Solid green light means it's making power. Solid blue light means it has a good internet connection. As you can see, this customer here printed out this nice little sheet. Uh, we also put these stickers on at the time of the installation, uh, just as a quick reference, but the installer kind of went one step farther, uh, printed out all the different LED colors. So this inverter, what it does is it changes it from the DC power coming down from the solar panels into AC power, which is what the building runs on. So after changing it from DC to AC, the power comes down through this conduit and goes through this solar production meter. This meter is owned by the customer. As you can see, it has some numbers on it. This only keeps track of how much solar power this system has ever made since it was installed. And this one looks like it was installed December of 2020. So as you can see, this meter is spinning right now because it is actually making solar power. So from this meter, the power goes out through this conduit to a disconnect just like this outside and a meter socket just like this outside. All right, so this is the outdoor equipment for the solar system. Uh, so this is the rapid shutdown switch for the solar. So again, this will shut down the AC power going to the inverter, which will then send the signal to the optimizer to shut down the power coming down from the roof. This is the smart meter. So this is the meter that's owned by the utility. Uh, this is what they're gonna get a reading on. So that way the utility company knows exactly how much solar power has been made and what to give the customer uh, their incentive payment for. So again, this is the disconnect for the uh, solar inverter. This is the disconnect or the push button for the battery system for the Tesla Powerwall. I don't know if you can get in close here, but it is labeled battery shutdown on the sticker there. So in the event of a emergency rapid shutdown response, uh, the fire department or first responders would come up, shut off this disconnect for the solar system, as well as push that button for the battery system. If we were to push this button for the battery system now, um, the building would still have power, but if it loses power, it just won't prevent, it will prevent the battery from kicking in to uh, power the building. So that's it, that's the outside uh, equipment for the solar and battery system. But after the disconnect, there's also a meter socket just like this outside that we'll look at. That meter socket is owned by our utility because the customer gets credits for how much renewable energy that they've produced. And in our area, Massachusetts, it's now called the SMART program. Uh, so Eversource, which is our utility provider, put their own meter inside that meter socket and they drive by once a month and they'll get a meter reading from the existing meter as well as a meter reading from that meter. And that's how Eversource will know how much solar power the customers made and how much to pay them based on their incentive amount. This meter here inside does exactly the same thing as the one outside. It's just this one is owned by the customer. The one outside is owned by the utility. 
just to kind of help keep them honest. So after the power goes through the inverter, through this meter, outside to the disconnected meter outside, it comes back in into this disconnect. This is an AC system disconnect. And this is a requirement because at the time the inverter was installed, the disconnect in the breaker was more than five feet away. So if the AC disconnect is more than five feet from the inverter, you have to install an additional disconnect. So this, all this does is it shuts it off the AC power going to the inverter from the grid or from the house. And that in turn, again, will also allow the inverter to send a signal up to the optimizers to shut off the power coming down from the building. I'm sorry, coming down from the modules. So after going through all of this equipment, through this disconnect, the power then goes into the Tesla gateway. So inside this gateway here, you can see there are three separate circuit breakers as well as a main circuit breaker. So this one, this is where the solar is back feeding. So all of the solar power enters the gateway here. These ones are labeled black and red because the power walls are labeled black and red. So the black power wall feeds this breaker, the red power wall feeds that breaker. So this is essentially where all of the renewable energy gets combined. So if we follow the path of the solar, the solar is going to enter this breaker and then what it's going to do is it's going to charge the batteries first and then once the batteries are fully charged it will then flow into the house the building supply the needs of the building and then any extra power that it's making more than what the building's using is going to flow out through the service disconnect back into the grid spinning the revenue meter backwards so in, again, in our area, Massachusetts, we have net metering. So we have one meter for the power that comes into the house and that same meter for the power that goes out from the house. So the power that you take from the grid is the same exact price as the power that you put into the grid. Some other states will have dual metering. Well, they'll have a separate meter for the solar to go into the grid and a separate meter for the power from the grid to come into the house. And it's usually a 50% loss or something like that. They don't give you the same amount of money for it. So, so that being said, the solar again provides power to the building first, and then any extra power that the solar's making will flow into the grid, spinning the meter backwards, thus producing a credit on the customer's utility bill. The meter outside um, that produces smart payment credits, which are separate, and those the customer gets uh, in the form of direct deposit or checks every month based on how much solar power they've made, not what they've used or anything like that. Uh, and again, so with this particular installation, these batteries sit here pretty much full for the most time because um, we actually also have a program called Connected Solutions through our utility. So if you allow the utility to log into your battery bank and export power into the grid during high demand response events, that allows them to shift renewable energy around in the grid rather than trying to ramp up all their fossil fuel oil burning generators um, during peak demand time. So not all the time, it's, it's only limited weeks that they outline. Um, typically in our area, it'd be like the end of the summer uh, when there's high air conditioning loads, uh, things like that. So, so that allows them to uh, leave the battery here full. Uh, it, of course, if the power goes out, the batteries will immediately supply building or power to the building. Uh, if there's sun shining on the modules, the, the batteries will run the building and then the solar will charge the batteries. So that's kind of a homeowner's view of it uh, from an installer's perspective. Basically how that works is if the batteries are sitting here fully charged and the house isn't using a lot of power and there's a bunch of sun shining on the modules, the Tesla power walls will actually phase shift or frequency shift, uh, which means our electricity runs typically on 60 Hertz. So the, the power walls will actually drop it down, um, which is out of range of the inverters. So that the batteries will actually make the inverter shut down. And so that prevents the solar from overcharging the batteries. Once the batteries drain down, um, you can set it to whatever you want. I believe right now it's about 80%. So once the power walls drain down to about 80%, they'll shift the frequency back to 60 Hertz 
which will allow the solar to kick back on and start charging the batteries again. But the nice thing is most of the appliances in the house, your washer, dryer, heating system, uh, they can all operate fine. Uh, but the solar inverter being uh, a grid tied utility interactive inverter is much more specific with its requirements. Um, likewise, once the power comes back on, the inverter has to monitor the power for a solid 300 seconds or five minutes. And once that everything is normal for solid five minutes, then the inverter will kick back on. So likewise, once the power walls shift the frequency back to 60 Hertz, it will take another solid three minutes for the inverter to recognize that and then start producing solar power, which will start charging the batteries again. So again, one final little wrap up here is, is basically the power comes down from the modules, goes into the inverter, changes it from DC to AC power, goes through all of these components, which basically just track the production and allow a means of disconnect if there's something wrong or if there's an emergency. And then it goes into the gateway, which is the main service disconnect for this building. So this is the main disconnect. Uh, and the existing electrical panel is now considered a sub panel, uh, which again means all of our grounds, bonds, neutrals, grounding electrode conductors all have to come back to the main here. And the solar will supply power to the building first. And then any extra power that the system is making above what the building is consuming will then flow through the main breaker back out to the grid. And that is a brief overview of the SolarEdge solar system and the Tesla Powerwall system.